rose lovers, professional and amateur, from all over the world are gathered here. Stepping out of the internet to learn more professional knowledge, Jiang Zheng She is already ready to face more challenges. However, it's the first time he has ever introduced Chinese roses to an audience like this. It's a nerve-wracking experience. But it's a success. His Chinese roses win an award. More laurels for the pioneering Zhang Zheng She. Yijitsukahuama,喜欢的人是很多的 with the rapid development of the internet industry in China, a group of young people who love Chinese roses gather together in the countryside of Chongshu. This is a miraculous encounter between Chinese roses and China's new economy. Color, shape, fragrance, and especially its ability to bloom each season. These are characteristics that have made Chinese roses the envy of the flower kingdom. Who would have thought it? Ancient varieties cultivated by Chinese ancestors, whose allure is now transmitted through the internet. Who knows how many more stories are still being carried forward in the world of roses? But these Chinese roses are also more than just a product. They are flowers with lives of their own. Where did they originally come from? And what's their next destination in their journey? Here in the French National Center for Scientific Research, Professor Mohamed Bandamani has set up an international research team Seven years ago, they started looking into the origin of modern roses. These scientists have their own way of seeing roses. For them, beautiful roses are a DNA sequence composed of four nucleotide bases, A, T, C, and G. Understanding the complex sequence will help them to understand the history of Chinese roses. It also offers insights into their future. The unremarkable looking flower is at the heart of this scientific endeavor. This is one of the ancestral Chinese rose varieties, the flower that first arrived in Europe from China and remains widely used by flower breeders. And we ended by choosing a Chinese rose called Rosa chinensis. You know, modern roses are hybrids between Chinese and European roses mostly. We went back in the, in the, in in years and years and checked which rose was introduced into Europe and participated the most to the creation of uh, the uh, 30, 35,000 roses that we find now. After seven years of research, first complete high quality genome sequence has been achieved, a landmark in the history of botany. But decoding the genome is about more than just understanding the biological mechanism that gave rise to modern roses. It also plays a role in the creation of new varieties efficiently. Along the way, many surprising facts about the rose have been discovered. It helped also understand the domestication of rose, but also to understand the evolution of rose and its cousins. You know, rose, uh, it belongs to the Rosaceae family, uh, to which belong strawberry, raspberry, apple, peach, and strawberry. You know, the strawberry and rose are very phenotypically different, very different. 
but at the genetic level, they are very close. Flowering plants first appeared some 120 million years ago. Who would have imagined that the strawberry and the rose had the same origin? The data contained in these DNA sequences might look dull, but goes far in explaining the vitality of Chinese roses. The Hall of Prayer for Good Harvests at the world-famous Temple of Heaven. A symbol of the traditional Chinese understanding of the cosmos, the heavens and the earth. In the history of the Chinese rose, in the People's Republic of China, the Rose Garden of the Temple of Heaven played a leading role in the naming of Chinese rose varieties. In the 1960s, Miss Jiang Andian, who actively highlighted the outstanding contributions of ancient Chinese roses made to world floriculture, spent a lot of time in the Temple of Heaven. She, alongside other horticulturists, introduced and cultivated some 300 varieties, earning herself the nickname Lady Chinese Rose. So it was where the Temple of Heaven's Chinese Rose team came into being. Nowadays, the team is headed by Fu Yinghui. Uh, 慢慢地對這個品種識別,但是那會兒年紀小嘛,也沒有對這個樂界或者咱們發揮這行,那有那麼大的興趣,但是呢,主要是我師我影響我。The Flower Exhibition at the Temple of Heaven is an important event. This year it coincides with the anniversary of the founding of the PRC. So demand for roses will be higher than usual. Getting the roses to bloom at around the same time is a huge challenge for the Chinese rose team. Over the next few days, Fu Yinghui will be the only one able to picture nearly 1,000 potted Chinese roses in full bloom. Different varieties of Chinese roses grow at different speeds. How should they prune the flowers properly? The gardeners at the Temple of Heaven are especially proud of their ability to control flowers by pruning. In addition to pruning, the application of fertilizer can also influence blooming. Close observation and an awareness of the complete structure and anatomy of the flowers is essential. Each potted rose will have 15 to 20 flowers. Then they need to thin and cut back the branches. Care needs to be taken to keep a safe distance from the buds when pruning the petioles, and to conserve energy by removing lateral buds. In Fu Yingwei's eyes, the Chinese rose is a greedy flower. It has a voracious appetite for water and fertilizer. It also requires a lot of care and attention. Every time, there is a lot of pressure. 